Hello everyone and welcome to Tonic TV, the craftiest show you know on a Sunday, where we give you lots of tutorials, demonstrations and inspirations in one compact show. So let's find out what's coming up on today's show. First up, I'll be showing you the awesome deals we've got on the Tonic Studio store this weekend. Alison Whelan will be showing us a lovely demonstration using the large Winter Wonderland gift box. And we've got a selection of our best tips and tricks of the week from our design team. So let's get started and find out what amazing deals we've got on the Tonic Studio store this weekend. So the deals run from Friday all the way until Monday at 4 p.m. So let's find out a little bit more. First up, we've got a glitter accents bundle. We contain five different colors of glitter accents, which create beautiful embellishments at 60% off. We've got a glitter drop bundle next, which are our Nouveau drops, but infused with glitter. There's five in total and they're available for 40% off. We've got a special mirror card bundle for you with seven packs of shiny mirror card available at 35% off. We've got a Nouveau Glitter Bundle next, which can add some dazzle to your project and they're available at 70% off. We've got our Glitter Marker Bundle next with five different glitter markers with fantastic shine and sparkle to them. These are available at 40% off. And we've got a Glitter Card Bundle last with four packs of Craft Perfect Glitter Card which has all the dazzle and shine that you'll be looking for in your next project. It's available at 50% off. And those are your weekend bundles available from Friday all the way until Monday, and they're only available for a limited time. Next up, we've got the large Winter Wonderland box with Alison Whelan, and she's going to show you how to make it. Good morning. Happy Sunday. Today, we're going to share with you our Winter Wonderland large gift box. So this is what we're going to make today. There's a special offer today so if you didn't catch it when it was on TV have a little look at it today it's fabulous not only for Christmas but all year round beautiful for lanterns to hang in the garden um, put your little fairy lights in these and hang them up you can cut the panels in I've just laid them on top here but you can definitely cut them in so let's make a start. Yeah, you could do a lot. I just was thinking then you could do like even a pinata or something like that. You with could. It, a, bit, a, a bit random. <gasps> Kids would love that. That would be good, wouldn't it? Sweets. If you hung it from like a hang it from a tree and then uh, you know have a stick or something like that. Yeah. You'd do something quite fun with that. No, you know, children are bored at the ta at this moment <laughs> in time. <laughs> even them, those that have gone to school briefly are coming up to the summer holidays. Give them a stick, send them in the garden, <laughs> and let them hit this around with the sweets. It's not often we give you child a stick, is it? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it would keep them happy for a little while. Yeah, it's a lovely, lovely, right. lovely book. This is your die set as it comes to you. So your main part, there's lots of layers in this. So lots of possibilities. But don't just think of your boxes as boxes. Think of them as panels for your cards as well. Because these would make beautiful Christmas cards. You've got the lovely little tree that I've shown here. Well, I think it's a tree anyway. It could be a pattern, but I think it's a beautiful tree. So if we look at that, that would make a lovely panel. Little bit of ribbon, little sentiment. I think that's quick and easy Christmas cards for me. It's got lots of lovely details with that. If you've got your speciality papers and your and your card stuff, yeah. so in that case, you're using a gold mirror on there. Really, just yeah, bring it, like you, you can use the details to really pop. So it's a good, uh, it's a good way to use it. All these colours are on offer today as well. We've got our emerald hessian. We've got our polished gold on the top. Chili red, and our bright white. So have a little look on the yeah on the store on the shop the, and yeah this week uh, this help uh, yourself. not just this weekend this sale as well. So there's a, a monthly sale going on all the way through July, which is sort of a uh, a Christmas saver sale, really. Uh, there's loads and loads of stuff on uh, on Craft Perfect, on Nouveau, so all your paper and card and embellishments, they're all on the, uh, on, on the store. So check out those bargains. You'll you find some really good wins on there. Fill your boots, as they Fill say. Fill your Christmas <laughs> Santa Claus boots. <laughs> right then. So as well as this, we've got a little sprig. We've got a Merry Christmas, Noel, little snowflakes, and also tags. So we've kind of covered it all. There are two other dies in this set as well. I'm sure they're on the website. Have a little peek. And um, between the three sets, you've got enough to make wreaths as well. Um, one has got candy canes. One has got baubles. Um, I can't think what they've got all together. But between them all, they make a wreath. So that's an extra something that you've got. 
So you're going to take your big die. You will need an A4 cutting machine for this. And cut two of these. So there we are. So I'm just going to push this to one side a sec. And show you where I start. So fold it all to start with. All your straight folds I'm doing first. So they are all mountain folds. Okay. So let's go around these and the bottom ones. So as you can see, all those are mountain. Same on the side panels. All these are straight folds. And the last one. So I'm going to use my my paper creaser and I'm just going to reinforce these because you're obviously wanting nice crisp angles on your folds. So just take just a couple of minutes just to reinforce everything. And uh, yeah, it, it, this window wonderland large gift box. You say it's uh, it's on offer on the website and it'll be on the offer for for seven days. It is really when I say large, it's a lot. You've got loads of room to oh to, gosh to fill yes, some stuff I'll open it up after and you can you It'll can be have one of our a little bigger up. bigger gift box. I can't I can't think we've done really. Probably a kaleidoscope. kaleidoscope I would say would be yeah. the biggest gift box. But yeah, there if you're are. yeah you're looking for to fill up with lots of little bits then uh, then this is it so all our straight folds are mountain and then you'll see the diagonal folds they are all going to be valley folds so give them a crease on the back and just work your way around the box the fold is there for you so it'll it'll do its own thing you're just giving it a little bit of a helping hand I mean, it's not often we tell her that you need to reinforce, but I think you don't have to. But I just think it's nice to have those crisp angles because the angles make this box. What do you send the? This is two fifty. There we are. It's a good sturdy card. This says um, for for this size box, I would say. Um, don't use anything below um, a 240, I would say. But again, depending on what you want to fill your box with. Mm. There we are. So we've done all that. So you can see there, that is the shape that we're going to be left with. So I've already done this one because I thought you might be a little bit bored watching me do it all. If you did want to make something that's purely decorative, like something for the tree uh, or that, then then you could use a lower GS, GSM because you're not going to be carrying stuff in there. That's right. So, yeah, you can... The only thing I would say is if you want to put them away and save them for next year, yeah. then go with the higher. If you're doing them, um, you know, if you're a, a... You may well be a teacher in school. This could be what you with children are doing. So I'm just gluing along the tabs. Because of the indents with this card, it does take a little time to dry. So I'm going to leave that to dry now while while I do oops while I do the decorating. Hang on, let's put it back in place. There we go. So to to save a bit of time today, I've popped some tape on the back of the decorations. If you want your projects, you know, sometimes you just want to give them, you've got a present in there and it's a throwaway, then I wouldn't worry about um, using glue. But if you want them to last, I would always glue my projects because the glue will mold, it'll, it almost melts into the two layers and bonds them together. Your, your adhesive tape is always going to sit on the top of your card. So I've cut some panels. I've done one year already. So we've used, let me show you what I've used in the panels. So I have used the outer edge panel that's got the dots around it. They make a lovely little finishing feature. You could join these dots and have a stitched effect. 
Also with these, if you look at the triangles, you may think, oh, why do I need two plain triangles? The cutting edge on this one is on the outside. But if you look at this one, I'm hoping you're picking it up on the camera. The cutting edge is on the inside of the, the shape. That means they will layer together. So you'll just have a tiny little layer. And that's the same. If ever you've got die sets and you look at them and you think, oh, I didn't want two plain edges. Have a little look where the cutting edge is. So I've cut it in the plain die first and then I've used the beautiful Christmas tree and cut it into the gold. So let's pop a little bit of glue on you and then we can glue it in place. Yeah, I've got a little bit that hasn't popped out there. So there's lots of little glue in points here. They almost lead you where to put the glue. Just put little dabs where you can see the larger areas. There's also some uh, other bundles um, on this weekend. So you've got so sort of fireworks themed uh, if you're in the UK or if you're in the US, it's 4th of uh, July. So you've got um, celebration bundles there for you as well. So really glittery colors like sparkle is the is the word they, is the word you'd use to describe them. So yeah, happy, check them out. Happy Independence yeah. Day to our American friends yeah, as well. Yeah, Happy Independence Day over there. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of tape on the back there just for speed as I say and this is our tissue tape which you should be able to pick up on the website there we are there we go all done let's just pop them off so we just work along just popping our shapes in place. I've got a little bit of glue there, but that'll polish away. There we go. So then, oh, I've taken all the tape off these, so they're a little bit. So I've used it as a pattern rather than a Christmas tree, and I've mirrored the image. So the bottom, I've turned upside down. Again, it's, it's just a little design feature. So same again on the top, we've got it facing upwards and then on the bottom we've got it upside down. So are you thinking about Christmas at the moment because we've had some fabulous goodies lately. Yeah, lots of, you know, whether you've seen the sleigh on Quit and Craft or you've seen other bits and pieces as well. There's, We've had a lot, yeah. We've had lots of uh, cool Christmas stuff sort of spread out, and I know it's been a bit of an unusual year, but that's something nice to look forward to. Your Christmas is going to happen, whatever. Yes. <laughs> whatever the state of the world yeah. is in, Christmas is coming. So you're going to have um, a good time to be able to give gifts, and fingers crossed by then we can all have a big get together. But even if the situation isn't what we want it to be, then we'll, there'll be a way to. Uh, find a way it'll be good you know to have those fest it'll probably be easier to stay indoors more but then when it's a bit colder and wetter and, and everything i know say no and why else is like that anyway <laughs> yeah it's, it's cold and wet today <laughs> it's a little bit humid i think it, it, today it is but we had such a great we had a great spell weather and now it's uh yeah it's a bit more cloudy but i was saying yesterday on um uh, to someone, I think you think this is perfect crafting. Like crafting weather is, it is. It's like a nice. It is <laughs> raining outside. It's probably uh, probably the best time. So the dies I've used for the go the triangle panels again. I've continued the dotty theme, and I've used the lovely trellis as the inner panel. So I've cut them in white and the polished gold. So these. The way I'm lining these up, rather than lining to the top, I'm lining to the central line to try and keep them even. There we go. So I'm just going to work my way around. And pop them all in place. There we are. I love the decorations that come in these sets as well though. 
you know, your little snowflakes and things. You could even pop these. It could be a massive shaker as well, because I know you love your shakers. Yeah. What about, um, you know, if you've got small children who love to make a noise, what about, you know, those shaker yeah, instruments? Yeah, great, great, isn't it? It's more like, um, you feel that more and more now, that you're just like a sensory sort of playtime. And, exactly. And, and stuff like that. Yeah, try that. I, how, how would you say, like, what, a shaker with that? Like, so say you did it with... Acetate well, you could, or something. I would put acetate into the panels. Some I would the cut panel. the pattern in, then I would put acetate behind the panel. Be so good. I would cut the pattern into these, acetate behind them just for strength. Um, if you wanted to make an instrument, and then I would put um, things like I would sequins, put your bigger of the shaker things in there. Because yeah. you want you want them, you want that noise. Put, you want that shake and noise. Something like those. Do you know remember like those rainbow drops? Do you know the sweets? Yes. Those like they are light. Puff dries. Yeah, they're the most uh, like lightest thing. You could you know fill it with that, and you've got lots of nice colours and things. Fill like that. your boots. Wait, where is that? That phrase, fill your boots. Like I, I don't know. You, you, That's another you one told that me on one of those. Like I, I, I got to find. I'll have to find that out. Fill your boots. That must be my word of the day. Fill your boots. I reckon it's just something to do. Like in my mind, just off the top of my head, I think it's something to do with like fishing. Or something like oh, that. Oh, I you'd, don't know. You'd I think fill it's your boots the army, full of like cod if you uh, <laughs> if you want <laughs> when you came ashore. I don't know. I think it's going to be Maybe I don't want to look it up. Maybe I'm just a bit like I'll find out another time. There we go. So I've popped a little bit of tape on there again. I'm just doing it for speed. So as with all our boxes, it's always easier to glue it when it's flat. So bring the sides around and just meet them together. Even though my tape is, is a little bit protruding over the edges, it'll be fine inside the box. So there we are. There's the startings of your box. So it's a little bit of a strange shape to start with. How do we do the next bit? Well, this is the bottom. I'm just gonna pop these in so they don't get squashed. And then we can look at the top then. So I'm going to pop some tape just onto these. Again, normally I would glue them. But for speed, I'm just going to tape today. As we all said, just decorate first, innit? Always decorate first. Just makes your life easier. easier. Oh, don't make your life difficult. <laughs> right, so these now, they just overlap each other completely. So one goes over the other, and that's your first side. So another little bit of tape onto the next one. And I'm using, you know, I'm using enough tape to hold. There we go. But again, I would, you know, you can glue on tape if you want to. Use your tape for a quick grab and then pop your glue in between. So that's your third one. And you can see the shape make, you can see the shape come in without even trying. It makes its own shape. Oops, stuck to my finger there. As we said earlier, uh, the, uh, this set's available on deal and will be for the next seven days. So uh, take a look on the on the website and all the colors and stuff that you, you, that we're seeing here in the cardstock, that's available as well. It's part of the monthly sale, the Christmas sale. Uh, so yeah, you can create this whole project at discount uh, with the stuff that's on the store. There we are. So you can see in there now, that is the size of your box. So it's a pretty large box to fill. So how does this go together? Right, your next bit now, you've got two little fold lines along the top. Just fold those backwards and you're gonna bring those in together. Your sides then will come over. They will slot over the top. There we are. And your next one. And these folds just snap into place. Because you creased them all in the beginning, they literally just snap into place and your shape is made. Beautiful shape. So we've got a little bit of ribbon, 
just get rid of that tape. So I've chosen a little bit of white organza to tie in with the white panels. So I'm gonna just do a little diagonal cut on there just to make it easier to thread. Always give yourself more ribbon than you think you're gonna need because you can guarantee it you'll need a bit more. So I've given it a nice tails and then I'm gonna tie the box. If you're going to decorate the box, be careful where you place your decorations because if you pop them, let me just show you. There we are. There's my tie on the top. Tidy that bow up. Let's do the other way because I don't want my tails going upwards. We want them going downwards. There we are. That's better. So tidy your bow up so it, it looks pretty. I am a bit of a bow faffer, i got to be honest. There we are. So if you want, if you want this to be opened with a gift inside, then you need to be careful where you're going to glue. I've cut a few of these of the little sprigs. And I think thought I cut but I don't know where they oh there they are and I've cut some tags as well so you can tie the tag onto your ribbon that's fine so we could pop that on in fact I can do that now put the tags through I've put two on you just to so we'll have red on the top white on the bottom so you can write on the white one it makes it harder writing on the red one. There we are. And we'll tie this up again. I told you I was a bow faffer. This is where we skipped to like 45 minutes later. And I'm still faffing with the bow. <laughs> Dan, can we do that in the edit? There we are. So we just pull those down. And you faff as long as you like. I'll probably fiddle with that a little bit longer, but never mind, you don't want to watch me doing that. <laughs> so these little sprigs, curl them, so you've got a little bit of shape. You kind of, you don't want them to interfere with our slit or these top bits. So where would we stick these? Let's have a little look. I would kind of stick them onto, I'm hoping you can see there, onto these front, the, the ones that come over the top, the flaps that come over the top, I would stick them onto there because then they're not interfering. So we'll have a little bit of glue and we'll pop these on. Try and make sure as well that you don't glue your two together because that's not what you want to do. These just add a beautiful decoration, I think. So again, shape them with your fingers. And as I say, if you've got the others in the set, then these will make a wreath at the end. You can rearrange them all to make a wreath. So there we are, we'll pop one that side. And there should be another white one. And that's, ooh, as I knock it off. There we go. There's our little box, all decorated and ready to go for a gorgeous gift. Hope you've enjoyed this demo. Join us again. Bye. Thanks, Alison. And that die set is available at a special price for the next seven days on the Tonic Studio store. So next up, we've got a special collection of tips and tricks from our design team. Hello, so I thought I'd show you this top tip of how to make foam stamps from your tonic dies, any tonic die that you have, so that you can stamp with any of your Nouveau products like Nouveau Embellishment Mousse, Nouveau Dream Drops, 
um, sparkle spray. This is just a mini one from a kit, but the full size bottles are this size. I was just sticking with green to go with these two. Um, and also any of the other kind of like glacier paste or vintage drops also work. Stone drops work. You can stamp with your shimmer powders as well. You can uh, water them down and create like an inky texture with them and stamp with those. You can also use your glitter markers on this kind of a stamp as well. Although you can also use them on normal stamps and the glitter markers are fine with normal stamps. But sometimes you're just a bit wary of not wanting to ruin a stamp. So um, my simple way around that is to then make all of your dies a stamp. So this is one of the Silhouette Butterfly dies that came out a little while ago. I've just taped the outside edge and the interior design together and then you just want to cut it out of some funky foam obviously it can be any color of funky foam this is just some white that I had and then you just simply want to run it through just in your normal sandwich for your uh, tangerine and you only want to run it through in one direction because if you run it back on itself, the foam might have um, squished and expanded again, then you might double cut it and ruin the um, intricacy of the design. Then once it's cut, you just want to carefully poke out all the pieces. It is usually pretty easy to pop them all out, um, but any of the smaller pieces, you might want to bring out your um, Tim Holtz craft pick just to get the final tiny little details out of it. Because it's foam as well, it's quite resilient to you um, moving it around to poke bits out, um, but you can easily just use your pokey tool to get the final little pieces out. And obviously you don't have to use this the way the die was intended. So the die is actually supposed to have this main detail on this side, but you could make it so that you actually stamp and have this main detail on this side. So you can switch it around a little bit, which is nice. So how I then use this stamp, because it's all very well making this, but then it's sometimes like, how, how do I actually stamp with that? So how we can then use this as a stamp is you can either um, have a dedicated acrylic block that you use um, adhesive onto to be able to stick your stamps to which I do actually have an acrylic block that I do that with and the um, tape runners that Tonic make are brilliant for sticking this kind of thing to an acrylic block although you will need an adhesive remover to take it off if you then want to use the acrylic block for normal stamps as well um, but an easier way and um, a less hassle free way is to take some acetate this is actually um, the waste or the you know, the actual piece that comes in the packaging for some tonic dies. And then all you want to do is actually stick this to the acetate. So you're basically making your own acrylic block here. And you want to leave some space around the edge. Because the great thing about making a stamp this way with the foam and the acetate is that you can then stick it to your stamping platform just with washi tape. So you're not putting any glue inside the lid of your stamping platform you're just using washi tape to hold it in place and then you can use it just like any other normal stamp and you can repeat stamp it in different or in the same place over and over again to um, get a crisper impression with whatever type of Nouveau product you want to use. So I just want to tap that on my hand to get some of the excess glue off so it doesn't go sliding everywhere. Not that this matters if the, the glue oozes out because it's just a a homemade stamp but also you can actually just use them like this if you've done them stuck to the acetate you can actually just use them from the acetate it is a little bit trickier and sometimes you get some over stamping um, because you might have inked it too much in one area and then the acetate might touch um, your card as you're stamping and then we just need to wait for that to dry Okay, so once this is relatively dry, you can then take your stamping platform, I've just got the travel one here, and you can tape it inside um, on the, the lid. So um, you can use removable tape or you can use washi tape as well. I've just got um, removable tape closer to me, so I can just use that.
obviously you can line this up wherever you want it to be on the door of your stamping platform as well and then the idea is that we can just stamp it straight down on this side I have actually put um, another piece of the same funky foam that we cut the butterfly out of just to make sure that it's going to reach our cardstock and then you just want to take your piece of card put it in the corner as usual and then you can actually um, just get going with your stamping and you can use so many different Nouveau products to stamp with so um, we can stamp with dream drops all you want to do is take some of your dream drops squirt it out on your mat and then use one of these um, little sponges that tonic make and then you can get some on your sponge obviously you're going to want to wash this out fairly quickly after you've been using it because you don't want to um, don't you don't want the product to dry really hard in the sponge so we'll just do one corner of a wing because I'm going to show you a few different uh, Nouveau products so we can just do that top corner then we can press it down into place I might need to move that magnet um, a bit more on here missing a little bit of that some of the oh there we go I was just going to say some of the detail might be um, too fine for certain types of Nouveau product some things might work better for more detailed images but that is oh well I'll show you hmm. that is dream drops then you can also use um, glitter markers so you can also use these on your normal stamps as well they're not going to damage your normal stamp um, but let's do this bottom corner because uh, we know that this is going to stamp nicely so we don't really need too much detail to show this off you're literally just using the side of your glitter marker um, to just add some sparkle on there you can actually um, pump your pen to get a little bit of extra ink out as well if you need it depending on how you store them you might need to do that to get enough ink out and then we can just press this down get that bottom corner so that stamps really nicely and then we can also stamp with Nouveau embellishment mousse so for this you want to just take um, a palette knife get a little bit of the mousse oh that's too much a little bit of mousse um, onto your glass mat and then get a little bit of water you can get a little bit of water and spread it with your palette knife to sort of mix it into a paint consistency then we can apply it with the same sponge that we used for the dream drops so you could just use the other side of that pointy end um, and let's do this bottom corner here with this and obviously you can do this with any colour of your Nouveau mousses that you have and you can even do it with the um, expanding mousses as well. I haven't tried it with the crackle mousse but um, you might even get a crackly effect if you do it with the crackle mousse which would be really interesting. We can maybe do a little bit more because I think I'm missing a little bit of detail. There we go so that is the dream drops the mousse and the glitter marker and then the final one i was going to show you um just as it's something sorry for my squeaky chair that you might not um think about but the nouveau sparkle sprays this is just a sample one the bigger one the other ones are bigger but um i haven't got the bigger one in green and i was using green and everything else so i'm just going to spray some onto oh, i should shake it a little bit more first I'm just going to spray some out onto my glass mat. And then again, we can just use uh, one portion of that sponge to pick up the ink. And we want this top corner now. So this might give a similar look to the glitter marker, but it might not be as glittery actually. And then we can press down. That looks really good. I've not actually tried this before, but I knew it would work. OK, 
Okay, so that is our butterfly stamped with four different Nouveau mediums. And you can do this with so many other of the Nouveau products as well. I just picked four to show you. But we've got Dream Drops, the Sparkle Spray, the Mousse, and the Nouveau Glitter Marker as well. And actually, it's not quite dry yet, but um, if you stamp in Dream Drops, once it's dry, you can ink blend over it and it gives a resist effect as if you had heat embossed it as well. So lots of different ways or lots of different Nouveau products that you can use once you've made a foam stamp yourself out of any of the tonic dyes that you own. And then there's no worry that you might ruin a stamp. And all you have to do is just clean this with a baby wipe and you can keep it for using in more kind of mixed media -y sort of ways with all of your Nouveau products. So I hope you enjoyed this kind of little top tip and thanks for watching. Bye! Hello, so I thought I'd do a quick top tip on how you can pre-make your Nouveau Crystal Drops which is great for any times where you want to add your Nouveau Drops to your cards but you need to post it really quickly and haven't got time to wait for them to dry. So there are tons of different types of Nouveau Drops that um, Tonic have brought out over the years. You've got Glow in the Dark Drops, you've got the original kind of crystal finish that's got the metallic -y mica in it, you've got Jewel Drops which are translucent, you've got Glitter Drops which obviously have lots of glitter in them, you've got um, the kind of gloss vintage drops which are my favourite or well, actually the dream drops might be my favourite now but um and then we've got stone drops dream drops and vintage drops as well and you can do this with all of them um exact in exactly the same way they all work for creating pre-made ones so um i'll just show you with a couple of different types but the way i pre-make mine is you can either do it on the um, easy clean mat from tonic this little one came with my media mat or um there's a square one and i think there might be an even larger one now that's also available or um you can just save the backing sheets from the craft perfect double-sided adhesive sheets once you've used them for a project keep all of the backing sheets because they're like a waxy finish on both sides and it's got like the perfect amount of grip to keep a nouveau drop in its circular shape but um allows it to not stick to the surface so that you can easily take them off once they're dry and put them in a pot to keep for later so um, all you do is literally just make them as if you were going to make them onto your card. So you want to make sure that you've shaken the bottle so that a lot of the product is right down into the nozzle because that will just eliminate you getting too many air bubbles as you're working. Uh, but this way it doesn't actually matter if you get an air bubble because it's not straight onto your project so you can just chuck that one away if it didn't work out well. And then I always like to make a few different sizes because for my cards I tend to do two really big ones, a medium sized one and two little ones. That's usually how I use them on my projects. So you want to make that kind of um, selection of sizes for you to be able to use. And I just do, I'd probably do um, maybe more like half this little sheet with one kind in one colour so that I've got plenty um, in a pot ready. And I especially do this for the white, the black, the clear and the sparkly clear one like the white blizzard um, or even gold coast and silver crystals are really good to have on hand as well because you never know when you need that little finishing touch and a clear or a white or a glittery one can go with any project rather than having to have every single one of your colours already pre-made. So this is the Dream Drop which gives that gorgeous iridescent finish and I'll show you one more. Let's show you the Vintage Drop because um, you actually have to wait 48 hours for the complete matte finish to appear with the Vintage Drops. So you can see they're just coming out exactly like um, a glossy Nouveau Drop at the moment. But um, after 48 hours the, you do get that gorgeous matte finish. So that is literally all I do to make my... Um, pre-made Nouveau crystal drops. Um, if you have any trouble with them um, getting a peak on them you can gently tap from underneath to make them level out um, but when I'm working on this kind of slick surface, um, well not too slick but you know a, a non-porous surface, um, you don't seem to get too much of a peak with the drops and especially as it's like hot weather in the UK at the moment um, it also means that they're a nice temperature to work with too. So once all of these have dried, I usually leave them 
on my windowsill for maybe a day or two to make sure they're completely dry although uh, this little sheet of them I think it might have been on my windowsill for quite some time because there's some dust on top of it but um, once they're dry they all easily just um, flick off the sheet these glitter ones are a little bit more stuck but um, all you have to do is then pick them all off and then categorize them into their colors and then you can store them in their pots and you just have the perfect little um, nouveau crystal drops all ready to go on your project all in the sizes that you like to use because you'll have um, changed the size depending on how many of what size you tend to use on your cards and I actually keep mine in little pots like this uh, where I can keep them in individual colours so I just have a selection of different greens in this one so I've got gloss drops in this corner I've got vintage drops here and I can show you the kind of finish that a vintage drop dries to so that it's got that gorgeous matte finish compared to a really shiny uh, gloss nouveau drop. I hope you can see the difference. This one is the vintage drop and that one's the gloss drop. And then I've also got a mixture of jewel drops and glow in the dark and then loads of different sparkly ones because I do love the sparkly ones for Christmas. Um, the red one in particular is perfect for holly berries too. So um, that is how I pre-make my Nouveau Crystal Drops and that's how I store them so they're ready for me to use whenever I need them. So I hope you enjoyed this top tip. Thanks for watching. Bye. Hello. So I thought I'd show you a quick tip on how to use up some of the acetate from your packaging with, along with your Nouveau products to create some cool embellished acetate that you could use in window cards or maybe even a shaker card depending what Nouveau products you use on it and how much you can see through it. Um, but I love doing this kind of technique and I thought it'd be worth sharing with you. Um, the main Nouveau products that I tend to use to do this kind of thing with are glimmer pastes or glitter accents, they're basically the same kind of thing, they give the same glitter packed result um, but you can also use the glacier paste and you can use dream drops as well I'm sure there are lots of other um, Nuvo products that you can use for this technique too but these are just my favourite three to use for this so oh and as well as using uh, these products you can also sprinkle in some of the Nouveau confetti so I might sprinkle in some rose shell blossoms and some desert sunset stars just to make them look a little bit different and you can also add in glitter depending on uh, which Nouveau product you're using I mean if you're using the glimmer paste and the glitter accents glitter is not really required but um, for dream drops and glacier paste you might want to add some more glitter into it as well so um, I'm going to do a sort of warmer coloured one and a pinky purpley coloured one just to give you a couple of ideas so this is the acetate that you get in your packaging now so they have the cardboard packaging with a an acetate sleeve or sheet in the front of it to stop any dyes falling out of the window but it's not stuck to anything so there's no horrible adhesive um, stuck around it and you've just got a perfect sheet of acetate to use so how I do this technique is for this one I'm going to go two different glimmer paste, a glacier paste, a dream drop and some confetti as well but you put the confetti in afterwards. So I'm just going to take some of some, some different coloured glacier paste. I've got raspberry rhodolite and plum spinel as well and you just want to, you can put it as generously or as sparingly as you like depending on what kind of look you're going for. So I'm going to add um, the both the glimmer paste next to each other so that the glitter is kind of more concentrated. Then because I'm using different mediums, the kind of intensity of the colour kind of changes across them as well. So I'm going to keep the purple dream drops nearer the purple um, glimmer paste just to sort of tie the two together. So that should be plenty. And then for the final bit, I'm going to add in the glacier paste. So you want to clean off your palette knife 
for that. You don't want to put glimmer paste into your glacier paste. And this is, oh, the, the dream drops I used were the Indigo Eclipse. And the glacier paste is the Mambo Melon, which came out in the Tropical Paradise colour trend. So I'm just going to add that more down the centre. You can always squish this back together again and add more colour in if you have really missed an area that you really wanted there to be um, lots of coverage in. But sometimes it looks quite nice for it to be patchy. And also, if you do this just with Dream Drops, it looks brilliant for like under, sea, under the sea kind of scenes as well. So all you do is you take your other piece of acetate, which is the perfect size because it came out of two packagings that were the same size, and you just squish it. I like to do this with cardstock as well, but obviously for a, a demonstration you can't really see what's happening um, if I have a white piece of cardstock on top of here. But it also looks amazing on acetate because you've then got that um, see-throughness depending on how much product you put everywhere. So then all you do is want to pull them apart quickly and then you get two really wacky backgrounds. Uh, I maybe put too much on in some of these areas so they are a bit blobby but um, if that does happen and you don't like that look you can just take another piece of acetate and squidge it again and then get a second one or you can actually um, keep this between the acetate so you could actually keep this as a kind of um, sandwiched sort of piece it won't it might not ever completely dry between the two but it would give a different effect or you can then just pull it off and get another one too so that looks really cool we get a really cool effect that way um or oh actually yeah and then once you've done this you can take your confetti and you can sprinkle some of that in as well to give a completely different look. Um, usually I probably wouldn't mix this many different things together, but I just thought it's quite nice to show you all the different things that you can do. The, all the different Nouveau products that you can add in there. I've probably gone a bit too heavy handed with the confetti as well, but it does give a really cool background. You can just use a small portion of this on a card as a focal element, or you can see here where you add dream drops and the glacier paste actually, it's more translucent, so you could have something behind there and have it as a window card as well. And then I was also going to show you another colour combination. I might cut a piece of this in half and just do a smaller portion for this, just to show you. And I might keep things more separately actually, just so you can see um, a separation of what they look like. So if I put, this is the Harvest Moon, um, okay, this is the Harvest Moon glitter accents. So if I put that down uh, one end of it, we'll really be able to see the difference between the different products here then. And then I'm going to take the Lemon Twist um, Dream Drops, which came out in the Tropical Paradise colour trend recently. if I put them in the middle there and then I'm going to put the golden era glacier paste on the end and then you just want to take the other piece of acetate and squish it on top. So we should get a more um, distinct look at what the three different types of Nouveau look like. I like crunching this one, you get the glittery noise in it. And then you want to pull these apart this way so you don't contaminate them. And this is kind of the difference between all of them. So you've got the glacier paste, the dream drops and then the glitter accents. Obviously if you added the glitter accents um, thicker that does get more um, opaque as well and I just think this gives a gorgeous underwater kind of look and then this is just gorgeous um, Christmassy kind of colour especially with the gold it gives a really good Christmassy look and you can uh, press that in again if you want to uh, patch up any areas or anything as well. And then I probably wouldn't put confetti on the dream drop area. Oh, wrong confetti. Um, but I think it would look really nice on the glimmer paste. Just to add some of these desert sunset stars. 
and even in the glacier paste as well. It'll look nice too. So that's what that looks like. So that's just some um, interesting ways of using up the acetate that come um, in the packaging now and different ways of using different Nouveau products just to create focal elements or fancy acetate pieces to go in windows or for shakers on your cards. Like this little piece here, if you have a small strip die, for example, um, some of the designer's choice ones that came out recently, a small strip die um, with that behind it I think would look really gorgeous to give a different effect as well. So I hope you enjoyed this kind of quite long top tip um, and thanks for watching. Hi, it's Jen Cray and today I'm sharing some tips on how to maintain and revitalize your Tonic Studios Nouveau embellishment mousse. So I've got three pots here and this is for demonstration purposes. So the first pot I have is brand new. The second pot is one that's been slightly neglected and the third pot has been ridiculously neglected. So it's super, super hard. So today I'm going to be talking about the way that I maintain my embellishment mousse and that is with distilled water. So there is a huge difference between distilled water and regular water. Distilled water is purified and prepared through a process called distillation and basically that removes almost all like biological, organic and inorganic contaminate, contaminants within the water. So the water will contain virtually no solids, minerals or elements and it's like 99.99% .99 pure. If you use distilled water with your embellishment mousse then you are not going to be putting any contaminants in them through the water. However, you could be putting contaminants in through your utensils and your tools that you use or your fingers. So never put your fingers inside the mousse. When you're using mousse, um, never put it back inside the container. And I tend to clean my utensils uh, with uh, alcohol wipes or just plain alcohol on a paper towel. And that ensures that I am using clean utensils with my mousse and I'm not gonna put any contaminants inside of it. So the first mousse that I'm going to be revitalizing is the one that's just slightly neglected. So I can still get my spatula in there, although it is quite crumbly. I don't know if you can see that in in that um, in the video, but it is uh, it's quite dry. So I'm going to go ahead with my distilled water, and what I normally do is I spray in five sprays at a time, and that just makes sure that the the process um, to bringing it back to life is it isn't too fast and you're not going to put too much water in so it's controlled so i tend to put like five sprays in if it's really really dry i'll put 10 in um i'm speeding this up but the the process takes a couple of minutes for this one uh, but you don't want to sit and watch me do this for a couple of minutes and i just i'm just literally going in and mixing it um you do have to take your time and the spatula that I'm using there is quite a rigid one. You want one that's quite strong, but you can see there in a couple of minutes and that is that's completely brought back to life. Now I'm just going to show you what the new one looks like compared to the one that I've just revitalized and they're basically the same thing. I'm going to take the one that has been severely neglected and this one is really super hard. Um, sometimes they are past the point of no return and you can't bring them back if it's if they're just too hard this one I'm not sure I'm gonna try um, after I've sprayed it five or ten times then I can tell that this one's going to be able to be revitalized so I'm just carrying on spraying um, five 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 at a time and this does take me about seven or eight minutes to get this one right. So you have to persevere and you have to carry on using the spatula and, you know, mixing and mixing and mixing. And it just, um, it will bring it back to life. It brings all the creaminess back and you will be able to see very shortly that it is looking really, really good there. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with that consistency now. Um, it's, it's, probably feels a little bit hard and I'm just getting in all those cracks and crevices as well to make sure that we've got all the dry areas. 
So not only is that mousse starting to look good, it's starting to feel good as well in my, with my palette knife and the, the texture and the consistency feels like mousse should feel. So I'm really happy with that. And I think that compared to um, the new mousse, which is the one on the far left, so that's a brand new one. There's that consistency. And then the second uh, mousse, that cornflower blue is, um, that was like slightly neglected and that's been brought back to life. And then we've got that aloe vera and that was severely neglected. And that that looks um, perfect now and it's you can use it just as you would your brand new mousse. I hope that this tip on the embellishment mousse has been helpful and I hope to see you soon. Hi crafters it's Dawny P here and I have a little tip for you today which I don't think it's going to change the world very much, but it might make your crafting life a little bit easier. And it concerns a product which we've all got in our rooms, in our craft rooms. This product lurks. It's in everybody's crafty tray. We can't live without it. It's indispensable. It's a fantastic pro a product. But it's a menace. It drives us up the wall. And what is it? It's this. Red liner tape. This bad boy. Now, the actual product itself is fabulous. What isn't so fabulous is the tape, the, the, the backing tape, the plastic tape. Because what happens you put your tape on, you give it a cut, you take your tape off, if it comes off, and then it, it you try to pick it up to move it and it, look, sticks to you, sticks. Now, hopefully, I'm going to show you something that will stop that happening. This time, I'm going to put my back of tape on. And I'm going to bring in something that's going to stop that static, because that's all it is. And it's this. Something else you'll have lurking in your craft rooms, a bit of kitchen roll. Now watch. Take that off, put it on there. Job done. So I hope you found that useful. Happy crafting and I'll see you soon. Bye. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed that little insight and tips and tricks which our design team have come up with. Uh, if you have any suggestions of your own, you can email them to us and we may be able to feature them on the show. So that's it for this week's show. We've got a big week coming up. Uh, as of tomorrow, 4 p.m., you're going to be able to get your hands on the brand new Tonic Craft Kit number 34 uh, and order it ready for its August dispatch. So check that out. It's a really great kit and I think you're really going to like it. We've got loads more launches throughout the week as well. So thank you so much for tuning in today and I'll see you all soon.